Welcome to the M2 Podcast. I'm your host, Michael Anthony. My co-host is Kyle Heath. This is the show where we basically cover gaming industry-related news, but this week is more of a special because last night was the 2022 Game Awards. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to basically do a recap episode, talk about the game trailers that we saw that we found interesting, and also the Game Awards and like who won and everything you need to know about that. But before we begin, I know, Kyle, you've been out of town, you've been on vacation. What's been going on in your life the last week? Oh, dude, I was on vacation. I was on a cruise, man. I was in the Caribbean, you know, seeing the clear water and the amazing sand. And the beaches that are way better than the one I live near, you know? So, um, <laughs> but yeah. I know overall, it was a great time. Had a really good time. Had a lot of good food. Uh, had some drinks. Did a little... uh casino action nothing too crazy of course um but yeah did some of that but yeah and overall was, i think it was a pretty good time but, uh but yeah i got back yesterday unfortunately i think i got a little sick which is you know <laughs> kind of like it's like i love vacations but it's like unless you're not like you know extra vigilant on them it's very easy to just fall into sickness afterwards so <laughs> i'm unfortunately dealing with that at the moment yeah definitely with like seeing everybody too I always heard that, like, it's like uh, cruises are more like a Patriot dish because you have so many different people from so many different places all in one spot. Yeah. And uh, you can get sick kind of kind of easily, you know? Yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Um, um, yeah, so I uh, was doing that, um, doing the thing there, but um, uh, got back, just been resting up ever since. Uh, played a little... Um, a little smite last night which is really odd i haven't played smite in months but i played a little bit last night um while i was like half asleep and wanting to just like kill over in my bed but <laughs> but uh but there were there's some pretty good games actually surprisingly so i did some of that but yeah before i left i don't think i don't think i really played anything before i left for vacation that's like the only thing i played all week so it was just a vacation mode a vacation mode other than that so yeah, we're sick. chilling dude we're chilling man had a nice had a nice time off from work, so um back to it next week, you know. So but yeah, well, I don't know. What about you, Mike? How was how was the week? Um week was pretty good for me. Um I played a lot of Halo the last three days. And I mostly got into Battlefield twenty forty two. Did I tell you about that? Did we talk? I don't I can't... don't think we did. I know you were downloading it, but I don't know. Uh I didn't hear yeah. if you played it or not. I went on vacation, sort of like see family and go to a wedding. Um, before I left, this is for Thanksgiving, and before I left, I downloaded Battlefield 2042, and I finally got a ch chance to play it, and the game's awesome. I'm having like a great time. The only thing that's been bugging me is like the level of grinding that I have to do to get really good guns or, and like get attachments for my guns. Yeah. So I'm kind of getting bopped off of like people sniping across the map with like fully upgraded weapons yep. which is pretty tough but it's still fun man because it's like it's such a big game and it's like i love these giant arenas where i can just do whatever i want like if i want to have like a really huge impact on the game and like go in vehicles and fly around and just go pretty heavy i can do that or if i want to go a little bit rogue and just like go for incredibly long fr flanks to get a handful of kills you know you can just play it however you want him. Yeah, I'm, I'm glad that, to hear it's good though. Yeah, it, apparently fully fixed. Um, it, the game looks great. It plays great. It's probably better optimized than most games I've played in quite a while, actually. So, I guess it's fixed. Dang. The player base is back up. It's a good time. I recommend you hop in with me. I really, dude. I really want to get so like I really want to get a massive clan of like 64 people fully organized and do clan battles. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's notes. so much. Yeah, mm. but yeah, yeah, that's that's basically what I've been up to. Just Battlefield, a little bit of Overwatch, and Halo. Just been chilling, watching TV too, hanging out with the dog. No, yeah. dude, yeah, World Cup. Ah, crazy week for yeah. games. You know, I, I there was a lot I missed, unfortunately, when I was on vacation. But coming back, my first day back, like actually seeing games, crazy, crazy games today. It's kind of wild. Yeah. It's been insane, dude. Like Croatia beating Brazil, um, Argentina and Netherlands going to the penalty kicks. But even like the 
the the other round of 16 were, were just crazy crazy close crazy fun yeah um looking forward to tomorrow uh because i'm supporting england and they're they're going against france so it should be a good game hopefully oh, yeah. close hopefully england wins <laughs> yeah bring it home baby bring it home it's too early to say it too early to say it. <laughs> Oh, I guess so. You just gotta leave it alone. If if they win, go to the semis. Then you can sing it. <laughs> Until then, you just, you just gotta stay quiet. You gotta just cheer and hope for the best. I feel it. I feel it. I really do. Yes, sir. So, why don't we go ahead and start getting into um the the game trailers? I think there were something like I think there were like forty something games or something ridiculous of the yeah. amount of games that were premiered at the game awards. But we yeah. only have. 18 19 that we're covering that like interest us yeah i mean it's yeah something like that i mean overall the ceremony i guess was what three and a half hours including pre-show so really long a lot to get into um i hope you got a free stream deck somebody out there or what was it not stream deck steam deck hope you got a free steam deck dude because that uh you know they were giving out a steam deck a minute if you watch the valve broadcast um, and it would show you like the names real time oh, what was that the broadcast kept crashing up for me. Like I pulled it up on Steam Deck or on Steam and Valve and the website, and it just wouldn't play. Yeah, yeah. I, don't know. I, I had some issues with it at first too. Eventually, it um it leveled out a little bit, but but yeah, no doubt that the uh <laughs> the Steam Deck rain was uh, probably what brought it down. But but yeah, so there's a lot a lot to cover. Um, we're not gonna of course cover everything. It's gonna be stuff we miss. It is what it is. It's such a it's such a long, I mean, if you want to sit down and watch the three and a half hours, I mean, there's a lot um, that was covered. And uh, yeah, we're um, just going to go through some of our favorites, I think. Um, I know a lot, of, a lot of what I liked, Mike ended up liking as well yeah. from the list we compiled. So it's going to be a lot of similar interest on that front. But, uh, but yeah, there's certainly a lot to discuss. Um, I know, like, first off the bat, uh, in the pre-show, there was a, only a couple of things that really kind of caught my eye in the pre-show. Um, I know for you, uh, Returnal is coming to PC. That was a huge announcement. Yeah. Um, good to see, you know, that PlayStation game coming to PC. Um, Hellboy, there, there was some Hellboy game, which looked kind of interesting. Um, and the trailer, if I can find it in this pre-show. Fortunately, I don't have timestamps on the video, so it's kind of just a lot of pressing uh, pressing keys until I get there. But, but yeah, there's a new Hellboy game um, in the works. It was announced, Valiant Hearts. There's just a lot of stuff here. Um, but yeah, this, this, this Hellboy game was very, uh, this art style is just insane to me. Um, it's kind of crazy. It's very like kind of cartoony, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, what were your overall thoughts of Hellboy? Because like personally for me, I, I'm trying to remember if I watched the, so any of like the original movies. Um, I don't think I've had, I think I've just seen like bits and pieces, but I mean, I, the character oh, overall is fantastic. Yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, the, the entire background of like who Hellboy is and how he's kind of like an anti-hero almost in a way yeah um, it, it's just I think it's a pretty cool adaptation and I think it's fitting to put it into a vet, video game and just the way the art style looks like you mentioned it kind of reminds me of Wind Waker a little bit with just how things work like it, it, it's, it, it's like it should be a cartoon or a comic book mm -hmm. is really what they're trying to aim at and it's just, it looks fun, man. It looks kind of like animatronic, too. <laughs> just yeah. uh, kind of goofy, yeah. but kind of like, it looks like a lot of fun. So, yeah. yeah, it sure does. Yeah, unfortunately, no date or anything, no estimated arrival. It's just a wish list game. So, you can wish list it now across Steam. Uh, but it's coming out, you know, seems like on all consoles, really Xbox One, PS4, PS5, Series X and S, um, even on Switch, they're getting their own version. So, um, mm hmm game to wish list but yeah it looked pretty good um i know another game that was actually in the pre-show and i'm gonna find it was uh, atomic hearts um there was there was an among us announcement which was pretty interesting um there was like this so i'm just gonna mention this real quick this whole like picture i've seen clips of like oh, games yeah. like this this whole thing was um i'm actually gonna back it up a little bit this was very interesting like yeah it's kind of like uh the picture like kind of morphs and changes the environment very interesting stuff. I saw like original concepts of this on Twitter, so to finally see some, <laughs> to see like a game utilizing it, it's kind of crazy. Um, 
Yeah. Yeah. Did I, did you see like the original any of the original tweets on this stuff, Mike? On the tweets? No. Yeah. No, I didn't. Um, this is the first time I've ever seen anything like this. Yeah. I thought it was pretty innovative. I like the idea of um, making it so the pictures are real to the point where you can walk through them. Like <laughs> yeah. it becomes like you build your own reality. It looks like. Yeah. Just take like a Polaroid. Yeah, it's called Viewfinder. It's on a PS5. Uh, it's coming out strictly PS5, it seems. Um, but yeah, I don't think, yeah, there's no date or anything, but you know, it's in the works. <laughs> so that's coming to PS5. Um, but yeah, very interesting concept there. Um, and then this one, I saw some gameplay of a boss fight within this game. It's called Atomic Hearts. It's a first person, it's, it's like a first person science mech. Um, it reminds me a lot of like a, um, some like Bethesda titles, whether that's like, or even like Bioshock or something like that, kind of that style. Um, like, um, Bioshock. Uh, there's a, there's that Bethesda game. The name is leaving me. Um, Dishonored. That's what it is. It, it reminds yeah, me of that game too. Um, but yeah, there's. It seems like there's a lot of complex uh, boss fights in this too, from what I've seen. Um, that's actually coming out in February. Um, across all platforms, it seems minus um, for some reason minus Switch. Uh, you know, there's yeah, it's probably like usually Switch or yeah. someone that gets that yeah. always gets neglected. But yeah, Switch also has a lot of a. Uh, has, has a ton of like cloud ports and stuff too so i'm sure it'll probably at some point come out on the cloud there but, but yeah that, that's a game that's coming out just in a couple months um that looks pretty good that um i'll probably be checking out so i'm very excited for that and mainly just like from what i've seen from gameplay it looks like it's a challenge which is you know which i always find fun so um yeah those were i think in the pre-show itself i mean that was like all we were both kind of interested in um there's a lot of other kind of small trailers and things um little of course this even tons from indie games it seemed yeah tons from indie games and just uh, a little bit of dlc here and there mm -hmm. but yeah yeah there was also a trailer with ninja promoting samsung tvs getting <laughs> like x cloud yeah. support or whatever um that's right yeah, yeah all it, it you said all samsung tvs not just the new ones i guess yeah yeah i think so. they said i thought it was like 2022 like if you have a 2022 samsung tv right. you get the update automatically but it's like um i guess that you have to download it i think something like that um older tvs i'm not sure i know it was just they specifically said the newer ones i don't know if 2021 tvs had the feature or not um but yeah 2022 apparently was ready out the box you didn't need to um worry right. about anything so anyways uh, as far as the pre-show that was pretty much it i mean we're diving into the main show um at this point um this couple of awards, I think like the first 15, 20 minutes was just awards, but um, we'll be getting to that a little bit later, talking about some of that stuff. Um, the first major uh, announcement that we got uh, was from um, I think Supergiant. <laughs> they, they, their logo came up on the screen and everyone was like, oh my gosh, like everyone was freaking out. And then we see gameplay uh, for what looks like Hades. <laughs> it's like, you know, it looks Hades. like the Hades gameplay. And um. Sure enough, at the end of the trailer, we uh, see that Hades is in fact getting a sequel, Hades Two. Um, so very exciting stuff there. I mean, Hades. What more can we say? It's a very beloved game. I know. Uh, last year uh, I was nominated for many awards. Um, and yeah, sure enough, we're getting a sequel to that um that franchise, which is exciting. Um, very crazy you... announcement to open the show off of. Show up off of. Did you ever see the uh, or play the first Hades? Uh, I saw a ton of gameplay. I never played it myself, though. Yeah, I haven't played it either. And it's on my watch list now because I've heard so many good things about the first one. They won Game of the Year as well, didn't they? Pretty um, sure. Um, was, it 20, was it 2019? It might have been 2019. Or was it, 20, was it 2020? Because 2021 was um, It Takes Two on the Game of the Year. 2018 2019 i guess because it came out on december 6th the first game december but, 6th of 20 which year uh 2018 okay. so yeah four years to four or five years to make the second one i'm, I'm expecting it to be good because i heard nothing but good things about hades like yeah. i got a buddy of mine that every time i see him he asked me if i played it yet yeah <laughs> so. yeah the game was kind of i mean it's 2018 it came out which is so it's kind of a i guess a late bloomer in a sense um, I feel like really 2020 was when I saw a bunch of people playing it, even into you know 2021. So um, that's true. But yeah, it did very well, got a lot of rewards. So very excited for the second one. Um, and of course, you know, pretty much following up right after that was uh, 
from the makers of Bioshock. We're going to get a brand new IP. Um, it's called Judas. Um, and it looks, it, it gives me the Bioshock vibes for sure. Um, they just show off a little bit of gameplay too. It's, it's like, it, it, it screams Bioshock, especially with like the hand abilities and all that. And, um, yeah, it's, uh, I mean, it just looks crazy. Like, just seeing this purple planet, like, what is going on here, Mike? What is it's this like, game? I, you can't really say what it is, other than that they're really trying to showcase the mechanics and the graphics of, of it. But to me, I, maybe, play, tell me how you feel about this. Like, I look at it, and I see something similar to a space odyssey missed with a psychological thriller, and not knowing, like, what's actually going on. It seems like the person that you're being or the person that they focus on in the game trailer is going through some type of like psychotic mental break <laughs> yeah uh, it's it's kind of wild it looks very dystopian too um yeah very much so um yeah i th this this catches my eye so it's definitely something i'm going to be keeping an eye on um unfortunately it's just a wish list title at the moment uh, you can wish yeah. list it coming out for ps it's what i like it's only current gen so it's ps5 xbox series s and x and uh steam and epic store is where this game can yep. be uh, purchased. So um, you can wish list it on platforms now. Um, but yeah, definitely going to be keeping an eye on Judas. Um, it's like a pretty solid one. Um, there were, I guess, after this, um, I know like in between we saw, like, there's a lot of sections throughout this where we see like these little kind of just, you know, short little trailers for like Switch games or like whether it's, you know, a JRPG or something like that. Um, there's a lot of that in this. Um, so uh, there's tons of, there's tons of little games that may catch your eye. Um, so certainly, I guess, keep an eye on. Uh, if you rewatch the broadcast at all, certainly keep an eye out for that. Um, I know, uh, pretty sure it was shortly after this, we got, um, we got the Suicide Squad a Kill the Justice League trailer um, discussing, I guess, the, the Batman voice actor who unfortunately passed away recently. Um, yeah, his, it was his last game. Um, he is, this is the last game, this upcoming game is the last one he voiced. Fortunately, they have all the lines and stuff done. Um, so, um, rest in peace to, rest in peace to Batman. But, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I, that's very much a game that, um, just from the trailer itself, it's like, I mean, this isn't really a trailer. I think it's kind of just like paying homage, but, um, it's very like, whoa, <laughs> like seeing Batman just kind of, <laughs> like, it just it go it dark good. in a sense. Oh, it looks yeah, really good. Yeah, it reminds good. me of, uh, like Arkham Asylum as well. Yeah. And like other Justice League kind of games. Yeah, they're like, surely Batman wouldn't kill this person, and then all of a sudden, there's Batman throwing a body down. Um, very funny stuff there. But yeah, so, um, kind of paying homage to that, I think, for the most part. I don't know if there was much else, really, on the, um, on the Suicide, on the Suicide Squad game. Um, that was kind of the crux of it. But after this, we got a ton of more trailers. And the best thing, I guess one of the best things is that we finally get a peek at, uh, the brand new Star Wars Jedi Survivor, the sequel to uh, Fallen Order, which I yeah, have to Fallen say, Order, really good. Yeah. So this this has high hopes. I think very much, very very much looking forward to this. Um, gameplay looks great. I mean, from what I see, it seems like kind of the first one. Um, in that sense, and I mean, it seems like you know new animations and stuff. But for the most part, it's kind of just what we loved in the first game. We're getting in this game, and uh. Even better than that, it's coming out in March. <laughs> so it's like right around the corner. Um, it's almost complete. But yeah, this is a uh, combat looks great. Everything, everything from what I'm seeing, definitely want to check this game out. Um, and it reminds me of the Force uh, Unleashed. Yeah, it kind of does. I think it's the blue lightsaber. I think the blue lightsaber yeah. like gives me that vibe. But uh, yeah, overall it looks great. I think what's really cool too is that you know the actor who plays uh, <laughs> the main character was out on stage, kind of talking talking about the game and. Hoping fans enjoy it and whatnot. So, um, dude, it's it's just I know I mentioned this when we were watching it, but it's like it is crazy how one to one this actor looks to the actual character in the game. It's like modern day motion capture and just modern day like technology that stuff is crazy. It still blows my mind. Um, yeah, I mean they crushed it. It's only getting better too. Yeah, because you got well, we'll bring it up later. One of the DLCs for um a super popular games coming out, and they added a famous actor as well. Yeah, and it's like it's, one for dude. one ratio. It's sick. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty sick, man. Um, but yeah, so new Star Wars, literally right around the, uh, right around the corner in March. After that, 
we got some uh i knew you had some opinions on this i'm glad we're talking about this because uh dune away <laughs> dune awakening i uh, got a pre-alpha footage trailer um yeah. not really much to go off of though go off of though huh it looks it looks kind of like a pipe dream so anybody that doesn't know who what dune is it's like a famous um book trilogy it's also had a movie adaptation i think they've had two movies actually and super famous but they're making a video game on it and i think i went to the website when i first heard about dune awakening the video game and they were already receiving money for products that wasn't finished or delivered yet and i'm wondering why would you is this like a cash grab to get on top of like a really good ip yeah um but I will say, all the cinematics I've seen are fantastic, but again, they're cinematics. They're not like real gameplay. Yeah. So, and, um, I'm cautiously optimistic. Definitely. Um, I wouldn't say it's a common theme throughout the Sword Show, but it definitely happens a few more times. Um, where yeah, we just no. don't really get... I mean, it's just, you know, it's kind of this... It's the... Uh, I think it's a, it's a crutch, I think, for, for a lot of games, especially in recent award shows, where it's kind of just like here you go, here's five seconds, or here's 30 seconds, and there's not really much to uh, derive from that. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, open world survival MMO and set in the Dune universe. You can wishlist it now. Who knows when it's coming out? Uh, you can sign up for the beta as well on DuneAwakening.com. I mean, we'll see. <laughs> um, yeah, not really uh, too much to, uh, to go off of there. Um, got another trailer for, I guess this is Forspoken right um got another kind of some more uh more stuff to look at before spoken um this this game looks um interesting very interesting it reminds me of like elder scrolls almost just the way the gameplay and um the the cinematics look like yeah. fighting crazy bosses and stuff like that it's in demo right now so i'd like to actually go check out how that would how it's playing yeah but, yeah I would too. Yeah. Um, the the reason why it's on my watch list is because it's by Square Enix, and most of their stuff is fire. So the only problem is is it's on PlayStation Five only. Yeah. Coming to PC at a later have... date. <laughs> yeah. Always. Yeah. Always. Always. Um. Yeah. I mean, there's a demo on PlayStation now. If you want to go and <laughs> actually play the demo. Um. But yeah. Very. Uh. It looks, you know, very interesting. It doesn't give me the Elder Scrolls vibes. It's kind of like the Destiny vibes, too, of, like, just, uh, I guess, overall combat and everything, so. Yeah. Yeah, it really um, does. Very, very intriguing. Um, again, here's another ad for Samsung and Xbox. You'll see a couple of those ads for the TVs and trying to advertise everything. Um, of course, Nintendo always... It, it's, it was kind of crazy how much I felt like Nintendo was kind of just plugging, like, their little games throughout it. Um. <laughs> Some of them just, I feel like some don't get the limelight, but, you know, they are smaller games, so I guess it kind of makes sense. Um, I mean, they, they mostly show their, like, indie stuff anyway, and then it branches out, and they show a little yeah. bit more um, during their actual expos, like Nintendo Directs. Yeah, That's their really indie worlds and stuff, I guess. Yeah. Um, yeah, very true, very true. And uh, we got kind of a little bit of a curveball, but we finally have figured out what, uh, what Hideo Kojima has in the works. Um, yeah, <laughs> just been kind of a long kind of speculation about what what exactly is he doing, like what's going on at uh at studios, um, and um, Death Stranding two, a sequel to uh, Death Stranding <laughs> is actually in the works right now, um, at the uh, at Hideo's studio. I uh, it this kind of like surprised me, and I don't know why. Like I think um I think I was expecting. I was expecting just new IP outright because that's kind of I felt like what was been, what has been teased. Um, it's just been like, oh, he's working on new IP. You're gonna get a brand new idea, something crazy. Um, and then we saw Death Stranding too. Um, <laughs> so yeah, um, it looks kind of completely different yeah. until you see uh, the actor. What's his What's his name? The guy from Walking Dead. Norman Reedus. Yes. Yeah, Norman. So Norman Reedus came like shows up, and then you're like, oh, this is Death Stranding. Yeah. yeah, yeah. They so a uh, DS two is the is the logo, um. But yeah, you see, um, some of the older, older uh, cast from the first game, which I feel like I need to make sure I play if I ever think about getting the Death Stranding two because, um, it seems like there's there's some interesting reactions from like the crowd and stuff. Whenever like 
Norman was showed again, and it's like, oh, he's, uh, what's going on? So, um, <laughs> but yeah, it's definitely a world that was kind of like very. I, I, I got mixed reviews, but I think overall, people that loved it really loved it. So, I figured it's got to be decent. Um, definitely yeah, something I, I want to get around to checking out. From from what I've seen and heard in all the reviews, it's like Death Stranding. The first one was good enough to get a sequel. So <laughs> yeah. I'm not against it, and the graphics look good. Oh yeah, I'm all for new games. So. Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, Death Stranding 2 is in the works. Kojima Productions. Um, yeah, of course, Kojima comes out, talks about the game a little bit. Um, there was um, a new IP that is teased yeah. and followed up um, from Kojima as well. Um, it was right after, um, right after Death Stranding 2 was shown. Um, and needless to say, looks... V- <laughs> <laughs> it looks, looks uh looks wild yeah wild's a good word um yeah it's like i i'm just gonna pause like i have no idea it's like i feel like i'm joining i'm like joining in in game session to like world war five in this planet i don't know what yes. <laughs> like i don't know what's going on um and then there's just like alchemy and sorcery and i i mean i don't know it, I'm, I'm intrigued it gives me the vibes when i first saw it i initially thought doom eternal like, because the graphics are just yeah. so good. There's just a war going off in the background, and, like, it just looks insane. Yeah. Yeah. Modus Vavium is the name. It's coming out next year. I mean, dude. I mean, yeah, again, not much to really go off of, and it says, you know, next year. We'll see. I The trend of, like, oh, we're only going to show this, but it's coming out next year gets me worried if it's actually going to yeah. land next year, you know, kind of thing. Um, <laughs> It's the case for a lot of these. Um, Or I, th- I know us as... Us as gamers have become uh, more able to read through, like, okay, well, this this may not come next year, which is fine. Um, but, you know, <laughs> it is what it is. Nevertheless, Mortals of AVM, saying that right, looks pretty interesting. I'm certainly excited um, to see and hear more about that. Um, more announcements, more awards, more everything, which we'll cover later. Oh, um, <laughs> <Yeah>. in, <a, laughs> in kind of a, a shotgun discussion. But, um, got some more trailers of things. One, the next trailer I think that was very, um, that looked interesting to me, which I don't know. This is, um, well, this is actually Tekken 8, which, um, <clears throat> which I know in our list. I can't remember if it's anywhere in our list. I, you may not have put it in your list, but, um, I, I didn't because I'm just not. I think Tekken's like a major IP and people are going to be very excited about it. But for me yeah. personally, I'm just not that into fighting games. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I'm the exact same. <laughs> like, it's cool that Tekken's still going, but at the same time, I'm kind of like it's still going. <laughs> like, like we're on, we're on an eighth game of Tekken. Um, I mean, yeah. that's how Mortal Kombat is, and all these other fighting games like Street Fighter. It's like it's all a big deal for people that are in the fight scene. But yeah. I'm, I'm just not one of those people. I think it's awesome for them, though. Yeah, yeah, I can respect it. You know, I'm, I'm right yeah, there exactly. with you. I think it'll be, uh, it'll be interesting to see. Hey, you know, for Tekken fans, you get a new Tekken game. Let's go, you know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, um, follow-up to this, uh, yeah, another game that I know we both we both liked was uh, Remnant 2. And the, mm-hmm. the main reason I was like, oh, Remnant, was because I, I think I watched Summit 1G play it on stream once yeah. uh, with some people, yeah. and it looked like a lot of fun. Um, so there is a sequel in the works, though, for the first Remnant. Um, very, very fun kind of co-op. Um, I guess co-op third-person shooter. I guess is the best way to describe it. Um, and it uh, it does have a follow-up. And yeah, so that's that's very exciting. If you if you've seen any gameplay of Remnant, it's very kind of steampunk shooter. Um, it's yeah. uh, the the biggest thing I think is that it is co-op. So it's like, all right, well, <laughs> if you have uh, if you have the people, then it's certainly something fun to check out. Um, but yeah, so that is um that is coming rather soon. I skipped through some of this stuff. Fire and Love Engage. Ah, Nintendo game. I don't know. First thing I saw. Um, <laughs> see some, uh, yeah, there's a ton of these, ton of these little announcements. Um, I think, I know we both had, I was the same way. There was a Transformers game that was announced. Very, yeah. <laughs> very, uh, very interesting. Reactive, but it didn't yeah. look like a Transformers game at all. Yeah, it, it really didn't. I was caught off guard by it. Um, I think for the most part. Um, but yeah, it's, uh, yeah, very, uh, 
very unexpected, <laughs> but I'm curious to see if a if they'll actually land a Transformers game. I feel like most of the past Transformers games, um, they're very forgettable. <laughs> it's the best way to describe it. So, oh, don't say that. The War for Cybertron, the Fall of Cybertron, that entire series back in the day, that was so cool and so much fun. I, uh, but then again, I you know I, didn't play too much Transformers, so you know, <laughs> yeah. can't speak too much it, on it. It like, looks good though, man. It yeah. was really good. Yeah, for sure. Faux show. It's good. I know um <laughs> I know I know you didn't mention it, but I, I thought it was worth mentioning at least a little bit. I'd put it in my list. Uh Diablo 4. It's set for like June of next year. We got a cinematic trailer. That's it. <laughs> um <laughs> so uh um I know I saw some comments saying, well, this is probably gonna be delayed. <laughs> so um yeah. and you know, I, I, I can't say I don't agree. Um it's very worrying to, since it's that close and we're just getting, you know, don't get me wrong, a beautiful cinematic trailer. I mean, I think that's what, you know, um, you know, Blizzard and all of them are known for, right? But, um, but yeah, nothing, nothing too crazy other than that. Diablo 4 was announced, got a date, you know. Um, definitely something, I guess, to keep an eye on. If you're, if you're a Diablo fan, it's probably going to be more Diablo. <laughs> so, um, yeah, definitely uh, worth checking out if you're into that kind of stuff. Um, what else? What else do we got? Uh, Banisher's oh. Ghost of New Eden. Um, yeah, that that was there as well. Um, and I don't know. Gosh, it's so. Can we just like advocate for videos that have timestamps? I think you know. I think it'd be awesome. You know what I'm saying? Oh, Here's for the, uh, the game awards. Yeah, for told, some of the mods. I told you, man. Uh, the hyperlink I sent you. They got they got them posted. Yeah. <laughs> but but the uh i guess the main games that we have coming up uh be the banisher's ghost of new eden um <laughs> one of them that's actually pretty funny uh, are you going to try to find the trailer for that one yeah Ban yeah banishers of ghost of new eden so there's that game coming out but the other one that i found kind of funny is there's going to be a crash bandicoot game coming as well <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah. I thought that was gonna um, be pretty cool. It's a four v four game. Um, it's like a team rumble, is what they call it. Crash team rumble with Crash Bandicoot. So, for all the old school fans of Crash Bandicoot and actually know who he is or that character is, then maybe this is the game you want to play. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, it's funny too when I saw that. Uh, when I saw that trailer too for like the Crash Bandicoot game, it's like um. People I was watching with, they were like, you know, is there enough characters in that universe to warrant like an entire game based around it? That's like combat based, you know? Uh, that's, yeah, that's a good point. The the prob yeah, I think there's probably some like throughout the entire game series because there's like like what six different Crash Bandicoot games? I think. I think so. Uh, there's a lot, man. There's like there's a good amount of Crash Bandicoot games. Let's yeah. see. Oh yeah, I keep I keep remembering a lot of these games as well are like PlayStation Five exclusives. So, why? <laughs> I thought we were past that. I, everybody yeah. is except for it seems Nintendo because like we've talked about is like their own thing, and then PlayStation. So, whatever. Yeah, yeah, it's still a lot of you know PlayStation. I mean, all PlayStation exclusives now they eventually go to PC, right? So it's like they're timed yeah. exclusives, which I think is still like annoying. <laughs> but it's annoying, but at least at least we get it eventually on PC. Um, yeah, so. exactly. Um, uh, it always comes eventually. Did you find the trailer for uh, Banishers: Ghost of New Eden? I did not, but <laughs> <laughs> um, mark it off the list. <laughs> yeah, just get it out of here. I don't, you know, whatever. I, I was trying to remember what it looked like, but you know. Memories fraud, I guess. Um, I, I will say though, one game, one game that I had on my list um, was uh, Meet Your Maker, which looked like a uh, very interesting um, kind of a. It looks like a. It, it's like a base builder. I guess is like the best way I can describe it. Um, kind of just building, building a base, I guess, to uh, you know, fight off enemies. And, um, I think it's it comes off that it gives a vibe of like. Um, I guess like a Groundhog's Day type thing where, you know, you have like 
multiple you're like you have multiple attempts to try and like survive and defend your base yeah um and you can like it's multiplayer too so you can like fight off enemies and you're just trying to the ultimate goal is just to win <laughs> but you can like you know you keep retrying until you win um definitely looks very uh if you're in, in the mood for a co-op game it definitely looks very interesting so um it, it's definitely one that i'm gonna check out and it's coming out in april so uh, it's like right around the corner um but the building overall looks pretty uh pretty good so um building rating um <laughs> you can upgrade uh your materials and your enemies and, um and yeah so apparently there's beta coming soon but uh yeah that will be uh in april for uh cross consoles yeah, that's a good ad i actually forgot about that one um i remember seeing it it reminded me of rust because isn't rust the uh the looter shooter kind of game where you build your own base and you have to like sleep in it every time you log in and stuff yeah i mean like, yeah rust know. is kind of like a uh i right. i yeah, I think it has like the potential to be similar to that, just yeah. based on all the different features that it claims it's going to have. It just reminds me of Rust. Yeah, I mean the building aspect for sure. I mean Rust is kind of like a survival, like a multiplayer kind of. I, I, I liken it to uh, EFT in a sense when it comes to actually like you know getting loot and surviving yeah. and trying not to die, but um, it's not EFT in the sense that it's not as like hyper survival. It's not. Um, it's not as you're trying to, you know, loot and evacuate. You're just trying to stay and hold your base and get as much as you can. Right. It's kind of like dominate the server in a sense. Um, yeah. That's, that's EFT the... being escape from Tarkov, if anybody yeah. doesn't understand what we're saying. Yeah, very true. <laughs> but yeah, you're not escaping from anything except your enemies and Rust. So, um, I don't like that. But yeah, that that was one that's that's one that I'm definitely going to be interested in. I think I'm um, come April, see how uh, see how it does in reviews. Um, see if there's uh much to build off of. Um, we did get that trailer. There is, but there I do still have a lot of questions after seeing the trailer. So hopefully we get answers in the coming months. Um, yeah, definitely one I was looking forward to. Um, and yeah, I know. Uh, pretty shortly after this, we got a Fortnite trailer. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah, after all that, uh, Crash Bandicoot came on stage and he's like, "Oh, they they were announcing a uh, had a funny little skit and they announced a new game, and it's a rumble game. Abilities, yeah, it's a rumble game, Mike. It's a fighting game, yeah. baby. That's what I'm saying, man. So it looks like they do have a couple of different characters that um that will actually warrant having that many people. So it looks good. It reminds me of. Like, I hope it's similar to that dodgeball game. Do you remember that dodgeball game? Like, Street Cities or something? I don't I Oh, uh, Knockout City? Is that we're talking about? Yeah, Knockout City. That's yeah. right. That game was a lot of fun. I'm curious if Crash Bandicoot will be similar to that. Yeah. It kind of looks like it will be, right? At least from the... We saw in the trailer, so... Um, it would definitely have some of those aspects, I think. But, uh, yeah, so... Um, very much curious to see... I mean, a new Crash game. Always welcome to that. So... <laughs> um, i will be uh, very curious to see uh, what comes up out of that. Um, after that was uh, Lords of the Fallen, <laughs> which yeah, this game looks good. But like that medieval time, do you like medieval games? Well, then this might be up your alley. Yeah. Uh, it, it also like I think the success of Elden Ring has brought upon this like new era of games that are going that route. Yeah. And like the the Lords of the Fallen, just from the trailer, it looks like it's it could be something similar to that. Yeah, um, yeah, it definitely does. Um, yeah, it de it definitely gives off Eldering vibes in the sense of the environment. So, yeah, that's what I mean. Like the environment and like the the world building. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like Elder Scrolls kind of era and medieval style, dude. That's right on my alley. I love it. It looks like it might have some uh, uh, ghostly supernatural kind of uh, elements to it yeah. where it looks like you're fighting people from the damned <laughs> you see that yeah yeah some like of the enemies look insane yeah like shifting back and forth from like present day to like the underworld yeah so Dude, yeah it looks wild to say the least um yeah, those boss fights you're gonna hit i can already tell yeah heck yeah it's called the lords of the fallen the fallen i i assume got to mean like people that have like fallen to like the underworld right like hades or something like that whatever it could possibly be <laughs> yeah definitely yeah. interesting 
definitely on a watch list. Oh yeah. Yep. It's on the watch. You can wish list it now on Steam, PS5, Xbox Series X, Epic Game Store. You know, I think there's even a little gameplay in that. We just get a wish list. What the heck, man? You know? <laughs> what the heck, Mike? I'm excited for uh the next game on our list, which oh, is the one that you dude. had us write down. Yeah, and the reason I say this is because um when when this happened, I was originally thinking, oh Mafia. So like, I think they mentioned five oh five games and I was like, Oh Mafia. Like, oh Mafia Mafia. Um and sure enough, it's kind of a it, it's it's definitely not a mafia game, but it's in that uh crime genre. And dude, there's a star studded cast on this game, <laughs> to say the least. Um they have a ton of actors uh playing in this game. And uh I mean, dude, it's it's the Florida in the nineties. I mean, come on, just, <laughs> that's gotta be good. Yeah, just fighting crime and stuff. Um, yeah, and there's you know a bunch of actors in, like I said. Uh, um, and you know a couple, I, a few of the notable ones, which I'll just I'll just wait for this to play out. Um, but yeah, there, there's the biggest one they show at the end. It's like Danny Trejo is he's in this, which you know I love Danny Trejo. Um, yeah, Danny Glover <laughs> is in this. Oh, that's really interesting. Um. And uh, yeah, uh, Michael Rooker's in this, which dude, <laughs> he's uh, he's just funny and everything. Vanilla Ice, no, I mean, ice, dude, I was like, right. what? Um, <laughs> the fact that they put Vanilla Ice in this is so funny. But then the trailer ends at the very end of the trailer. The best part: Chuck Norris is in this game, baby, with the roundhouse kick. <laughs> oh, dude. Um, seeing the poster too that. is oh, let's so go. Cool. And the poster looks amazing. Gives all the GTA vibes. Um. But yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of A-list celebrities in this looks. Uh, I'm curious to see if uh, if it's a good game on top of, I, like I'm really hoping it's a good game and it didn't just try to use celebrities as a crutch because I feel like that's oh, <laughs> sometimes yeah. where these game these games can fall. You know, that's very true. It is a risk, but yeah. it, I think it might have a good idea with it adding celebrities into a story driven game like Crime Boss. Um, yeah, so. Rock A City. It's a uh, coming soon. It's console only. It's actually not on PC, at least from the looks of it. Um, so very, very curious to see how this plays out. All I can say is, I hope I have a PlayStation 5 by then, Mike, so I can play games <laughs> like this, you know. You'll be able to find one. They're available now. Yeah, very true. Yeah, it's not as hard to get your hands on one now, so. Um, but yeah, in the future, nonetheless. Um, there wasn't too much left to cover. There's a few games. I think one of the... Uh, one of the ones I was really excited for. Um, showed up a little later. They had a little section on the uh, Modern Warfare raid for Call of Duty and Modern Warfare 2. So if, you, if you've been waiting on the raids and stuff like that, that's coming. Um, yeah, that was that was something I noted as well. I think, you know, if you're into that stuff. I'm curious to see how they're going to do those raids. I think it's like a part of like their spec ops. But um, if you do like Destiny raids or anything, or you're into that, really into that, it might be worth checking out. Um, so that's coming, I think, like this month. Um, there's a patch next week, I believe, on the 14th should be introducing some of that stuff so definitely definitely check that out um but yeah we had a whole thing on marvel snap you know i i i've been hearing that marvel snap's kind of a cash grab which is rather unfortunate because like it's the marvel <laughs> universe you know um so um yeah there's there's uh once i get through all the awards oh i'm skipping through it mike oh no you better rewind it. I'm rewinding it. This, All this, right. this is the one that I know you're you're going to be excited about. Oh yeah, as well. Very excited. As me. Um, yeah. Did you, did, Mike? Did you? I'm gonna ask a question first. Mike, did you know it is yes. when, at the time of posting this episode? Actually, it will be two years on the day since Cyberpunk released. Isn't that kind of crazy. Two years ago. Two it years on the day, what? December 2020, yeah. December 10th, to be exact. I still haven't finished it, dude. Two years. I was like, I was. I gotta gotta get on it. Like, I was thinking about that while I was watching this, like, DLC. I was like, bro, two years? Like, how's it already been two years? You know, in 20. I mean, (laughs) in two years. (laughs) Did you also know in 2021, we were supposed to be getting DLC? Yep. And this is the DLC. Rather unfortunate. It's called Phantom Liberty. And did you know who was... This is what I was hinting at earlier in the episode, or in this episode. Um, did you know Idris Alba was going to be in this? I had no idea. That was the announcement, yeah. right? Like, yeah, basically. Yeah, that, I think it was the Spoiler. big announcement with this next trailer. <laughs> like, Idris Elba is going to be in Cyberpunk. Um, he's a fantastic actor, so that has me even more excited. I mean, we have a... We, the, like, overall, Cyberpunk, great, 
I think overall foundation foundationally, you know, it's 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 got flaws, but I think overall the story is like still the world is still interesting. The story is still interesting to me, um, and uh, I think it's for me it's an example of you know they didn't just like shoehorn a celebrity like Counter Reeves in there to like try and yes. sell a good game. It actually had like purpose and um, really good story behind it. So um, yeah, I'm certainly not opposed to this. I think uh, I think it'll be very interesting to see um, how um, how it. Major Selba plays in this game. Now, I'm certainly excited. A really good actor, so yeah. it's got to be good. It's really good. <laughs> they did a really good job with Keanu Reeves as well. Yeah, uh, putting him into the game. Yeah, dude, Cyberpunk Phantom Liberty. You know, sometimes they say better late than never. You know, Mike, and I guess uh, That's in this case, better. I'll give him the pass. Better late than never. You know, I think. Uh, <laughs> I think I'm very. I, at this point, I'm very curious to see what they're going to do with the next Witcher and that whole trilogy and how that's going to play out more than anything at this point um because you know they tried with cyberpunk it's it's recovered but uh but yeah it was very rough at the start so i'm really hoping they learn from that i'm hoping they're one of the developers that actually learns from their mistakes <laughs> um so that's all i can really say about cyberpunk at this point still very excited for the dlc and the fact that there's other actors in it has me uh has me pretty pumped so again next year we don't know uh don't know exactly when but next year probably getting delayed <laughs> probably getting delayed <laughs> dude if this is 2024 delayed on the DLC, my no, it, I don't think 2040, uh, 2024. I think it's going to be like they'll probably say we'll probably get another trailer, a little bit more in depth, or like some teaser, right? And then they'll be like, okay, here's the date, March 18th, and then it's going to get to March 18th, and they're going to push it out like three months. But as long as it like, it should be easier to push the DLC when the game's fixed, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I would think. So. Yeah, I would I think so. So, yeah, yeah, I would certainly think. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm still very excited for uh, for Phantom Liberty. It's going to be a good DLC. So I'm definitely going to be playing yeah. it. Um, that's probably the biggest DLC that's on the horizon. I think. Yeah. They're 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 also like Warzone DLC. You mentioned Among Us DLC. It's like those are pretty big as well. But I think like Cyberpunk is pretty pretty big. So yeah. I think it's bigger. Definitely is. It's definitely going to put me back on the game. Put it that way. So. I'm yeah, excited for it. Exactly. Um, well, we had a pretty fire announcement that followed up Cyberpunk for a lot of the uh, a lot of the old uh, old heads that played uh, that played Armor Core <laughs> back in the day. Um, <laughs> you'll be excited for this next announcement. Bandai Namco. I'll say we're working on it. I have to say, just let me back up for a second. This looks insane. Dude, this looks like scorched, fire. that's why it's on my list. Oh. And then they like zoom out. You see, like, looks like a planet just get burned, baby. Insane. And then you get it gets juxtaposed with this wintry, snowy atmosphere. It's like, geez. And then what do we see from software? What do we see? A bunch of mechs fighting. Oh, you know what that was? That wasn't snow. You said it was snow, right? That was like snow, that was bro. actually ash. That, oh, okay. Yeah. Let me back it up. Oh, yeah, shoot. Because, because it's all burned. The cut scene, yeah, if you watch the cutscene, um, yeah, play it, and it'll cut to black, and then it says, let the last cinders burn. So that had to be Ash. Oh, you're right. I didn't even put yeah. two and two together when I watched it. <laughs> oh, my gosh. So it's like they glass the planet <laughs> and, like, destroyed and oh, burned dude. it. Oh, dude. Ash. And they're collecting and the, the parts. The only left standing are the mechs. And freaking mechs. I mean, dude, just look yeah, at this. Visuals look phenomenal, man. Yeah. Oh, for real. They look. They look for real, man. It's uh, yeah. I. It, it just looks. I think overall. It looks crazy, but it's Armor Core Four. That's what it is. Fourth, uh, fourth entry. Um, Fires of Rubicon. Rubicon. Or however you want to say it. Twenty twenty three. Do we have a date? No, we do not, Mike. 2023. <laughs> no, we don't. I don't think we're supposed to be expecting dates in this uh, this time around at the Game Awards. Touché. It's mostly Touché. like, hey, guys, we're working on stuff. Get get excited. Get hyped. Hopefully it's not delayed. Yeah. Um, yeah, Armor Core 4. That's in the works. It's coming out soon, I hope. Um, Have you ever played Armor Core? No, I haven't. I haven't. So... You know, I watched this. So I was like, the visuals look. I had, I had to admire the visuals, though. They look amazing. So yeah, it's it's gonna be good, man. It's yeah. gonna be real good. 
Um, yeah, we're seeing a little bit of a of the Super Mario movie trailer. I, I just I know we didn't touch on it earlier, but I just want to say, visually, animation wise, this movie looks spectacular. Yeah, like it's insane. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Um, I know people had a bit of a headache with the chris pratt being mario and mario not having an italian accent italian american accent yeah so i don't care man i don't know how you feel about it uh, I, me. I think they got jack black as bowser that <laughs> alone makes up for everything else that Come could on, possibly dude. go wrong in this movie yeah dude so, they had they have keegan michael key playing toad yeah and bro he does such a good toad like his voice oh, is amazing should. like yeah <laughs> He's like, a good dude. He's a good actor. Dude, good it's, it's insane. Yeah. He did a really good job. So, I mean, yeah. I mean, it's coming on April 7th. Which I, I'm definitely going to the theaters to see that when that comes out. Oh, um, definitely, yeah. Yeah, without a doubt. Plenty of time to see it, too. Without a doubt, I'm going to see that. But, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think um, I think the only other announcement, really, towards the end, um, the only one I thought, I mean, the only one I agree with you, I thought that was kind of worth, like, um, yeah, it's like literally the last one. <laughs> yeah, I think. Yeah, it literally is the last like major announcement. It comes from me... uh, which I also something I want to mention here. So let's uh, let's yeah, see. It's the, um, literally the last one. Yeah, Final Fantasy the sixteen. List. They show they show the logo. Um, but yeah, it's Final Fantasy sixteen. Um, what's like it's so like, and I'm you know not criticizing Square Enix for this. But the way they do their like creator, like they do their studio divisions, you know, it's like, and it's like such a generic name too. I think they, I can't yeah. I think they maybe showed it at the end of the trailer, but um, anyways, trailer itself. We'll get to that point in a second. Trailer itself, um, it's Final Fantasy. You like Final Fantasy? You gonna like this game? You you like? Do you like characters that have dialogue but show no emotion on the face? You like this game? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> That's a fact. Um, <laughs> The acting could be better. Yeah, probably, especially in the English dub, but, you know. <laughs> yeah, but the storytelling is usually really good, though. So. Yeah, definitely. Um, I mean, overall, just, I mean, this looks insane. <laughs> like, like combat-wise and everything, you know, is going to be, it's going to look awesome, so. Yeah, more Final Fantasy is, uh, it's on the way, Mike, in 2023. Yeah, I mean, it looks it. good. It looks like Final yeah. Fantasy. You get to pet a dog or, like, a dire wolf. I don't know what that was. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but it, it looks, it looks good, man. Yeah. And you know, typically it's uh only on PlayStation, so <laughs> Yes, typically, typically. Um I believe that's right. Yeah, like Final Fantasy sixteen. Sixteen. June twenty second is the release date on this. You could pre order it today. Now would I recommend pre ordering games in twenty twenty three? I'm not gonna say yes or no, <laughs> but, yeah. but I would, um I would yeah. at all costs. <laughs> yeah. Pre-ordering is a, uh, I don't know, not something I typically condone. Personally, I say that we could save it for you know next week when we do our review. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we talk about uh talk about our opinions, but yeah, but a handful of these games are available for pre-order, especially the ones that date. So if that's your thing. It's uh it's out there. Um, yeah, I mean, I think overall, overall was a pretty pretty solid show. I, I liked a lot of the uh. I love the, I always love the visuals of trailers. I love watching just you know what's coming out and stuff. It always excites me regardless of whether or not there's um banger after banger after banger kind of thing, you know. Um but yeah, Jeff Keighley puts on a great show every year. <laughs> I can't ask for uh can't ask for more, you know. He really does. And I like the musical acts and I like the orchestra and just everything that went down with the presentation. It was really well put together. So. Yeah. Yeah. It was very, very well put together. Um but yeah. And before before we move on to the awards or anything, I just gotta say, this whole uh, the the whole Final Fantasy sixteen studio, it's like they they just shoehorn a bunch of their games under one kind of banner. It's like this generic like Creator Studio three and Creator Studio two. Yeah, it's like really weird. <laughs> um, it's really weird how they do it, but <laughs> that's just you know some uh something that when I saw when I saw the name of it, I was like really confused, and I looked into it more, and I was like. I, I want to say we actually read an article on it fairly recently, or I don't know if we did it on the, excuse me, I don't know if we did it on the show or not, but I read an article recently, like when we were doing research of like um, Square Enix and how they were like moving studios and doing weird things, and yeah, so <laughs> it's um very That's odd. Pretty but... interesting. I, yeah, I never really paid attention to that, but I guess that makes sense if you've been doing like Square Enix is one of the most legendary 
devs publishers out there really so if they have like a archaic system <laughs> like it's not not that surprising yeah i guess so very very odd they have a lot of uh, ip so i guess it makes sense to a yeah. certain extent just number them <laughs> team one team two <laughs> yeah um yeah uh so i guess we can move on to some of the uh some of the awards that were given this year um we'll go i know game of the year of course i will say for last but um what i might do is just let the uh i'll skim i'll skim through a couple of them and then uh but i i think overall um <laughs> one of the uh one of the one of the first words that was given um what i saw oh. was <laughs> was uh was very interesting um <laughs> it's like, I think it was best. I think it was best performance, right? Yeah, I think it was best performance. Um, yeah, it was essentially best best performance in game. <laughs> um, and um, to no surprise, I think um, it was the uh, he's actually played Kratos and God of War. Um, God of War Ragnarok, of course, came out a month before the Game Awards. Um, and as you'll see, and from you know what we say, you know it'll uh. God of War won a decent amount of awards last night. <laughs> you know, no, to no surprise, yeah. I think. Um, which is fully deserving of, by the way. Spectacular game. Uh, it's very polished, very good. I mean, dude, it's God of War. And it's like, it's 10 out of 10 everywhere. No surprise to me at all. Um, yeah. yeah, Christopher Judge. Christopher Judge gave a speech. I'm not even kidding. It was eight minutes long. <laughs> um, which, you know, no, no complaint or anything. I thought it was very interesting yeah. though that uh that they, they let it did, go. Yeah, they let it go for <laughs> that long. Um well deserving though. I mean, you know, he's he's done a very good job portraying uh, Kratos, so um but yeah. And it was it was funny too cuz I, you know, Jeff Keighley even made a joke and I think everyone at home is thinking, "Oh, this is an opportunity for Steam Deck." So, just keep talking, you know. <laughs> um, <laughs> all that. But yeah. Um but yeah, got our Rad and Rock one, uh, Christopher Judge for best performance. That was kind of at the start. Um, but pretty much everything else, I'm not. I mean, I'll just kind of shotgun through. I think most of them. Um, yeah, that's probably the best way to do it because we have there's something like twenty some awards that were given out. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> like... I mean, I'm just gonna spit them out. I think. <laughs> um, best game direction was up. Um, Elden Ring ended up winning that. Um, a competition which I I'll, I'll read the. I'm not gonna read. I think every you know option for all of them, but like for um for game direction in general, I mean. Oh, and most of these, it's going to be pretty much the same. It's Elden Ring, God of War, uh, Horizon Forbidden West, Mortality, Stray. Um, th these are these five games here show up in a lot of the lists, especially the game related yeah. lists. So, um, but Elden Ring won Best Game Direction, um, Best Narrative, God of War Ragnarok. No, no surprise there. Best Art Direction was Elden Ring, which I think, um, which so it competed against Scorn, Stray, Horizon Forbidden West, God of War Ragnarok. Out of all of those. Scorn was very interesting, I think, and I, it was based on like legitimate art. Not to say that the others aren't, but I'm just saying like it was based off, I think, like a painting or something like that originally. Um, yeah, it was like they had a professional sketch artist, I think, is what their plan was. Yeah, yeah, that's a very interesting game artistically. So, um, uh, I'm certainly not surprised though that you know Elden Ring won because that game is also, <laughs> from a design perspective, just art in general is very exquisite um so but yeah elder ring won that a uh, best score in music god of war ragnarok <laughs> had the best uh had the best score um best audio design god of war ragnarok <laughs> we could like i think we should start like counting how many awards they got <laughs> um this audio design um yeah best performance we said of course christopher judge god of war ragnarok games for impact um which it's um games for impact i i is one of my favorite categories that i think see and to see who actually wins. Um, it's just, you know, a thought-provoking game uh, that's like a yeah. pro-social meaning or message. Um, that's kind of the idea there. Um, As Dusk Falls actually won that, which, you know, we covered. Uh, that is a Game Pass game that came out in July. Um, one of the more interesting titles I've seen, um, both yeah. artistically and just overall kind of narrative-wise. Um, and yeah, so uh, As Dusk Falls won that. Um, Best ongoing game. This is another. <laughs> this is another category I always keep an eye on because it's like, all right, what's still like banging? <laughs> and I, I'll I'll list through. This is one I actually want to list through all of them. So it was Apex Legends, Destiny Two, Final Fantasy Fourteen Online, Fortnite, and Genshin Impact. Um, all good, great games in their own right. 
but I saw Final Fantasy 14 one. And if that's not proof that the Final Fantasy community is out there and going hard, yeah, they're, they're serious. <laughs> they're they're serious. That is your proof right there. I definitely um, thought it would have went to Fortnite, but Fortnite isn't as old as Final Fantasy 14 online. It's very so. true. Yeah, and you know, I was I was honestly expecting Fortnite as well because I mean, you know, it's Fortnite. Um, but yeah, <laughs> Final Fantasy 14 ended up taking the win on that one. Um, and even Apex. I mean, Apex is a solid game. Destiny 2 still has a solid fan base. And there's even, you know, um, I think Lightfall is the name of the next expansion that's coming out next year. So, yeah, you know, still, right. on, still ongoing uh, content for that. Uh, but yeah, no, Final Fantasy fourteen won that one. Um, best indie game. You know, we, you know we out here pumping the indies up. Like, you know. <laughs> um, I thought Cult of the Lamb was going to get it. You know, I thought that as uh, well. That was, that's a really that solid a indie. One, but um, then I saw Stray on the list. And that's who ultimately wins. <laughs> yep. And Stray is like so hyped up right now. It's like they got. Look at this. So you're looking at the same list I am, right? For uh, best indie game and then best debut indie game. Yeah. What is the difference? Yeah, I you guess, know, it's a good, it's a good question. I guess it's um, like. Oh, uh, I okay. So debut is the first game by the new studio, independent yeah. studio. Yeah. So. Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, best debut indie is an indie that, of course, it's like a new independent studio. <laughs> like, that's just, yeah. this is the first game. But yeah, and then best indie game is just, what is the best technical achievement? <laughs> and yeah. that is not from a, you know, AAA publisher. So, um, and, yeah, both, both go to Stray. Yeah, Stray won both, <laughs> which is kind of crazy. Um, it, it's kind of wild that not only did they have a solid indie game, but they also, it was their first indie game. <laughs> just like, I mean, you know, kudos to them. Um, I mean, artistically, that game looks beautiful too. So, I mean, I'm not entirely surprised. Um, I, I the running joke that I that I kept making with you know uh, is that you know it, put a cat on a game, you're gonna win, baby. You know, I, it's just, that's how it goes. Um, but no, it, it's a game I definitely want to get around to checking out. I haven't checked it out yet, but especially after winning all these awards, it's got to be good. So <laughs> it's definitely a, definitely one I'm gonna sit down and uh, play. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean Cult of the Lamb. Uh, Saifu, I think was the that was another game I heard a lot of people saying was uh they really yeah, enjoyed. Really hyped up as well. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, certainly, certainly no surprise that Stray ended up winning those. Um, best mobile game, Marvel Snap. <laughs> um, which you know I was joking earlier that I've been hearing that. I mean, but not really joking. I've been hearing that it's kind of a cash grab. Um, but I mean, apparently people have been loving it. So, um, who might as say, you know? Uh, best community support. Again, this is a very this is very similar to the uh, best ongoing game in terms of the yeah uh, because you need you know. community support in order for it to be a best ongoing game. So it's only natural that Final Fantasy fourteen ends up winning. Yeah, it's very true. Hmm. You know, I I was hoping kind of No Man's Sky would win. You know, just imagine <laughs> No Man's so Sky. Was I, but, so was I, but I think No Man's Sky has like they don't have really community events. Like Fortnite does, for example. But Fortnite, yeah. I think, has kind of settled down over the course of the two years. Um, yeah. Maybe they're working on, oh, they've been working on Unreal Engine 5. That's probably why. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. And Fortnite got an update that introduced some Unreal Engine 5 stuff recently. I haven't checked that out, but apparently graphics are better. So Nice. Um, Time to go back. Time to go back. The best VR AR game um, that actually won was... Uh, Moss Book 2, that was against After the Fall, Among Us VR, Bone Lab, and Red Matter 2. Um, all VR games I have not played, because I still don't yeah. have a VR to this day, and I need to get on that. <laughs> I am literally right there with you. Yeah. Um, so yeah, not too much to say about that. Moss Book 2, congratulations, never played it. Um, innovation and accessibility. It's another category I, uh, I always keep an eye on, because um, I really... I'm always, I'm always curious, especially like new single player games nowadays. I'm always curious about how in depth they get with accessibility, because the more in depth you get, I think the more it just shows. The more it shows the developer, like you're actually like you know, thinking about <laughs> the player base. Um, yeah, exactly. And more, 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 and more expansion too. Yeah, exactly. For like um, allowing more and more people to play your game. Yeah, it's really nice. Yeah, very inclusive. So I'm always looking at this. Um, as Does Falls, these are the nominees. As Does Falls, God of War Ragnarok, Returnal, uh, Return to Monkey Island, uh, Last of Us Part 1, and The Quarry. 
uh, were the nominees. Um, God of War Ragnarok won. That is no surprise. I have seen a lot of the accessibility features in God of War Ragnarok. Very deserving, because that game is... It's nuts <laughs> how much stuff you can adjust in that game. Um, so, yeah, no surprise at all there. Very deserving. Um, best action game. Kind of wasn't expecting this, but at the same time, I kind of was. Um, oh, I definitely expected this. Think so? Bayonetta 3 won. <laughs> yeah. Have you seen gameplay of Bayonetta 3? Mm. It is madness. It's pretty wild. It's pretty wild. <laughs> it's madness. It's, yeah, yeah, pretty wild. Um, Model for 2, COD, was a nominee, which I thought was funny. Um, yeah, but, yeah. Well, but Bayonetta, two, dude. People think it's broken, so you can't really... But I, I haven't heard anything really negative about Bayonetta 3. Yeah. I haven't either. No. Yeah. Um, yeah, they even had, I mean, we didn't mention it, I don't think, but, you know, Bayonetta is, Bayonetta is having another kind of, like, spin-off style game that's coming out in, like, March, I think. Yep. Um, so, universe is still alive and well. Best action-adventure game? God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> you know, they, they, they just won it. Yeah. Um, which, again, no surprise. Solid game. A lot, a lot of the other games, too, are good. I mean, Horizon Forbidden West, I, I just feel bad for Horizon because, like, there's so many nominations, <laughs> and I don't think it won any. It's like, Same thing with, uh, with the Plague Tale Requiem. Yeah. It's like there's a constant theme of, like, super good games from really good publishers and uh, development studios where they're just getting nominated but not getting the win. It's like this is yeah. <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio curse. There's always, like, just somebody a little bit better than you. Yeah. That wins the Oscar. That's so true. Yeah. See, yeah, that's the thing. When it when we have these years, when it, there's a game like God of War that comes out, I mean, I just assume it's gonna be taking, it's gonna be stealing a lot of awards. And that's not to yeah. say it's not deserving of it. It's just to say that, like, yeah, you know, they know what they're doing. This is what happens when you make a good game. You know what I'm saying, Mike? <laughs> this is what happens. You know? <laughs> imagine taking your time oh, and creating a good game. Imagine, dude. So couldn't be out of war. Banger. Facts. So where are we at? We're at best RPG. Best RPG. Best RPG. Um, Elder Ring won this. No surprise. It's it's Elder Ring, baby. Not even a shocker. Pokemon uh, Legends I Arceus. I mean, need I say more? Have we seen the game? Actually, no. Those are the new ones. I can't say that for Arceus. The new ones. Ooh, the bugs are real. But I don't know about Arceus. <laughs> that was a nominee. I heard they are. I heard they're pretty yeah. bad. <laughs> yeah. Um, Xenoblade Chronicles Three was there, which uh, yeah. I think uh, I think it's another game that could have been deserving. Elder Ring ended up winning. So, Elder Ring. Um, best fighting game. Best fighting game. I was actually really happy for uh for Multiverses. They actually won this. Um, yeah. Pretty solid fighting game that came out this year. So uh, yeah. Kudos to Multiverses for uh, winning that. Yeah, that caught that caught a lot of people by storm. I think. Oh yeah. Um, when when that came out, like there were just tons of people that I've never seen play fighting games before, and they were playing that. So that was pretty, yeah, dude. pretty incredible. I mean, the characters were insane. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's, it's very interesting when we see a fighting game like that that comes out, and it's like it has all these known characters, and it's just like, all right, I wonder what would happen if they they fought or they fought, you know, like yeah, how would it go? Right. Kind of answers those questions, and I don't know. So it's very interesting. I I'd love to see more just fighters come out where it's like different like sections of like you know gaming and stuff like that. I think it'd be really cool. So. I'm hoping more games like Multiverses just like comes out in the future, because uh, or just more characters are added to make a star-studded roster, because it's a very interesting concept. Best family game? What do you think it is, Mike? Kirby and the Forgotten Land. Apparently, apparently, I, I haven't played that or the other ones listed below, but I thought, um, I mean, Kirby and the Forgotten Land is probably great for every age, right? Oh yeah, I'm sure. Um, Whereas some of the other ones, just not really. And I mean, dude, Lego Star Wars. Every Lego Star Wars game is a banger. Dude. I'm just saying. Yeah. Like agreed. They're just, agreed. Oh, they're bangers, man. Um, yeah, Lego Star Wars Skywalker Saga is no exception. Um, yeah, Mario Rabbids been around for what feels like 15 years now, <laughs> probably longer. Um, yeah, I mean those those are always. I'm sure those are always family fun. Um, Switch Sports was on there. Would have been sick to, you know, to see. But, like, a sports game, I guess, you know, if, you know, you have, like, younger kids who probably not want to play a sports game as much as Kirby, you know? So. Yeah, not just that, but it's, like, not everybody can do, like, Switch sports, you know? There's not really an accessible game for that. Yeah, yeah very true. So. Very true. 
is but isn't. I thought Splatoon 3 was probably going to do well, but I think it might be too competitive. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was going to be yeah. my point. Yeah. yeah, and you also need to face like another team. So <laughs> yeah. it could be kind of challenging. Um, especially for younger kids. Exactly. exactly. Kirby, I mean, Kirby in the Forgotten Land, you know, Kirby can suck up a car, dude. What kid wouldn't go nuts <laughs> at seeing, seeing Kirby do that, so. Um, the best sports racing game? This is your category, Mike. This is it. Oh, I knew Gran Turismo 7 was going to win. Like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, best sports and racing game? It's like, okay, you got F1. F1, eh. It was all right. FIFA, FIFA's FIFA, right? NBA 2K is NBA 2K. Ollie Ollie World, I haven't heard a lot about. I haven't, I haven't either. Played it. So I was like, okay, it's Gran Turismo. Like, GG. <laughs> she just goes to show you racing wins, baby. You know what I'm saying? That game is incredible. Here's about it's like true, true sim. Very FIFA nice. 23, FIFA same game every year. F- NBA 2K, same game every year. Gran Turismo 7, banger. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> New cars. New cars. <laughs> New cars every year. Um, <laughs> best sim and strategy game, which oddly enough is Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope, <laughs> with one of the nominees for the family game. Um, yeah, and I think. Compared to the other ones, I'm not entirely surprised. I mean, Total War Warhammer 3, I was actually not bad. Um, Two Point Campus, if you've played Two Point Hospital or any of that, it's just like a fun kind of like, oh, you can build your hospital or build your school. But, um, I mean, yeah, I haven't heard too much raving about that. I see a lot. I see people like playing it on Twitch and stuff, though, and actually having fun. So, um, definitely an audience. Dune Spice Wars, never played. Never seen Never gameplay of it, either. so I have no idea. But yeah, Mario Rabbit Sparks of Hope ends up winning that category. Um, best multiplayer game. Remember how we mentioned Splatoon 3 earlier? Well, it may not be a family game, but boy, <laughs> is it a multiplayer game. game. It's the best multiplayer there game. People, there were people online that were absolutely furious. They were like, how come God didn't work? Yeah. What about multiverses? or Overwatch 2 had an amazing two. release. Yeah. It's like, bro, it's like Splatoon 3 was so hyped up as it was coming out, and it delivered. Yeah. Like, I had, I had, I told you about this. I was getting my hair cut, and the person that was cutting my hair, she was talking about how excited she was to play Splatoon 3. Yeah. It's like, my hair I'm probably knowledge I mean, this now, you know? Yeah. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Splatoon 3, baby. W. So, happy for Splatoon, for sure, for that one. Um, COD is COD. Multiverses. I could see multiverses uh, in Overwatch 2. Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles, Shredder's Revenge. I mean, I guess. Uh, it's kind of just like it's the Ninja Turtles. Um, That's a tough one. Yeah. Um, oh, Content Creator of the Year was next. Oh my gosh. Content Creator of the Year. It goes to Ludwig, baby. Luddy. No. So That's um, an easy win. Yeah, I mean, no, dude. Yeah. Who is a uh, girlfriend. Cinderella <laughs> was also there nominated, but yeah. it's like... It, but so like let's read the description right so so it says uh for a streamer or content creator who has made an impact and positive or it made an important and positive impact on the community in 2021 i don't think anybody's done more than that than ludwig yeah i'm kind of surprised mr beast isn't here like every single year <laughs> all right because um, uh. he makes pretty important and positive impacts i think but ludwig yeah. being like a rising star for ages it makes sense he's like content creator of the year that's awesome yeah yeah definitely yeah i mean dude's been killing it especially the past two years so uh very deserving there best esports athlete we were both surprised by this one <laughs> you're both pretty yeah surprised. we were both thinking um <laughs> i i think we both thought simple yeah yeah and then we also thought faker yeah, like yeah, those were League of Legends, simple from CS:GO. I mean, yeah, it went to Yay for Valorant. Yeah, so. uh, Cloud9 Valorant. Yeah, I mean, simple, dude. Like Navi CS:GO. I mean, come on. I saw this. I, you recently, I think, linked uh, the simple uh, history breakdown, which I which oh, I rewatched, yeah. and it's like, dude's a legend, you know. So, yeah, he's a goat. Um, he's a goat. Yeah. Um, it's it's really hard to tell with esports, right? It's like yeah, it just sure. depends on the year. It depends on what's popular. I think Very if true. Simple won Brazil, the Brazil major, then he'd probably be on this list, and he pro- like he'd probably win the list. But because he didn't win, it went to Yay. Yeah, yeah. Very true. Best esports coach, 
goes to bazooka spelled a b z k a which i thought was pretty pretty uh pretty clever um and yeah he's for uh coach for the loud valorant team um so back to bazooka best esports event i was look i don't get me wrong league of legends won I, all respect the league all respect the league but evo has one of the best events of all time like i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> it literally has one of the best events um Hmm. That's yeah, a fact. I was a little upset Evo didn't win, but you know, can't win them all, I guess. Um, and you know, league's prize pool and the hype around league in general is just massive, so it only makes sense at the end of the day. You're not wrong. Not wrong. Not even Val Champs 2022. I mean, come on, it's Val, dude. <laughs> I got that too. Uh, it's just weird, man. Like I said, esports just depends on the year and what's going on. Yeah, and the drama. However. Although Valorant did not win the best esports event, they did win best esports game. So, um, yep. it was Val there. And, and they had the best esports team. Loud. Yeah. Yeah. Loud. Like the coach, the coach, the overall team, and the game. It's pretty esports. sick. Yeah, that's pretty sick. Um, and I believe one of their players, no, one of their players wasn't nominated, I don't think. Uh, no. I don't believe so, no. Um, but yeah, I mean, best esports game that's going against CS:GO, Dota 2, League of Legends, and Rocket League. Um, Valorant wins that. Um, yeah, dude. Let's go. The, the next one, though, uh, I'm actually really excited for. So the most anticipated game. Yeah. What did you? What is your most anticipated game? Because by definition, it says recognizing an announced game that has demonstr demonstrably illustrated potential to push the gaming medium forward. Yeah. When you think about it in those terms i think of one of the first things i think of is like a hogwarts legacy because and see yeah. this is the thing maybe not as much now because hogwarts Legacy, like they were going to introduce multiplayer it was going to be like kind of mmo experience but then they pulled that back but we haven't had a terry potter game in a while so and it looks like a decent one so i mean there's definitely a lot that could be done with that um i think yeah i mean hogwarts legacy was definitely one that I thought was going to win. Um, I mean, but then again, it's, you know, that's my most anticipated game. <laughs> so, you know, it's definitely not everyone. Um, but I, I mean, think, yeah. I think it's because they, they didn't win because they removed multiplayer. Yeah. That's, and that's probably, probably part of it. Sure. If they had multiplayer, then I probably would have been like really, really excited. But because they've taken that element out, um, it kind of like, Anytime you remove something that was previously announced, yeah, it's like that diminishes the excitement for the game. Yeah, it's definitely so, a gut punch, right? It's kind of like yeah, it's oh, like how can you be anticipated for a game that just took out one of the best components you're excited about? Yeah, one of the yeah, exactly, and that yeah, yeah and that's very true. I think it's part of the reason why. Um, Resident Evil Four is certainly a game I'm excited for. Is it going to push the medium forward? Of course not. Like it's a remake no. of a game. At the end of the day, it's a remake. It's not anything yeah, it's not revolutionary. Um, yeah, I am still excited for it though. I'm definitely going to play it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, certainly, uh, certainly in the description of most anticipated game, it does not fit the bill, at least in my opinion. Um, Agreed. And Starfield, although I'm very excited for the game, and who knows? I mean, it could be amazing, could push medium forward. Um, I think it's definitely, that's definitely, again, on my list, a very anticipated game for me. I think um, I'll be interested to see how Bethesda recovers from, you know, Fallout 76 and all of that. So um, it's kind of the first true, like, all right, here's our first game, first true game back. Let's see how we do. Um, I'm very excited for that. But I mean, Legends of Zelda, Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild 2, some may call it, uh, actually ended up winning. And um, yeah, this, that, I mean, you know. That's so obvious, though. Yeah. Every, every yeah. single Zelda game usually pushes the gaming medium forward. It's always the most anticipated game because it's like, what are they going to do next? It's very true. You know? they, they take their time with it, Mike. I'm talking five years now. It's going to be six, I yeah. think, by the time this comes out. Um, and that gameplay looks sick. Yeah, it does. <laughs> it looks sick. It really does. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping, I'm hoping to a certain extent it does push the medium forward. Um, I think, of course, it will, um, at least a little bit. But yeah, it's, um, I'm really hoping they don't. I, the, the only thing I could hope for is that they don't, they don't cling on too much to the first Breath of the Wild in terms of, like, conceptually, and they try to do something different in that aspect. Yeah. But we'll just uh, we'll wait and see, you know, um, until it releases. Yeah. Um, overall, though, most of the games on this list, very excited for, very much going to be looking forward to. Um, 
and I'll be curious to see what they do. So 2023, I think, is shaping out. There's a decent amount of games I want to check out. Um, so I, I think overall, it's looking like maybe a better year for, uh, for gaming than 2022 was for me, personally. Um, so yeah. We only, have, uh, we only have a couple more, Mike. Two more, to be exact. Um, we had uh, the best adaptation up for, uh, for grabs next. Um, of course, adaptation being, you know, any game project that is that moves across entertainment to TV, movies, comics, etc. Um, our nominees, I want to read out all the nominees here. We had uh, League of Legends Arcane, which, was, which I heard was fantastic. Still want to go back and watch it. Um, Cyberpunk Edge Runners, which I definitely want to check out probably before the DLC. Um, the Cuphead Show, which, I mean, it, the game itself looks spectacular. Literally, it's just a TV show of that. It's it's a no brainer. I feel like it just it's easy to do, and it can. Um, well, I say easy to do. It's very uh very time consuming, but it would look fantastic. Um, Sound of the Hedgehog two. Do I think that's the best adaptation? I don't know, probably not. I saw the first movie recently. I was like, oh, this is fun. I, yeah, <laughs> like, I have. I haven't seen any of these. I've only heard that League of Legends was like phenomenal, and people were yeah. like. One of my buddies was just yelling at me. He's like, "You need to see it. It's yeah. so good." Yeah, the so. soundtrack's great too. I heard. So. I heard. Um, but yeah, uh, Uncharted. I did see the Uncharted movie, which it's crazy to think. I think it was like February it came out. I saw it in theaters. Um, really? it came out. Yeah, it came out a, God, so, a while ago now. Um, at least I think it was February. I could have that wrong. Anyway, um, Uncharted. That that movie. I th- overall I enjoyed the movie. Do I think it's like the best video game adaptation? Um, it's good. It's not like spectacular i don't think um but uh but it's definitely i think you know worth if you play the uncharted games i think it's worth a watch <laughs> just to kind of see there, there's some easter eggs in there too for people that did play the game um so um if you played them definitely worth a watch but i mean arcane ended up winning so i i think i gotta i gotta watch arcane at some point <laughs> yeah what platform is it on um arcane i think it's netflix i believe is it i think so Man. Let me do a quick little. Uh, Pretty movie. sure I saw a Netflix promotion for it. Um, see. I think I mentioned it it's when they accept Netflix, the award. I mean, I'll definitely check that out. There's a yeah. couple of movies I also need to watch. Yeah, uh, yeah. They, they. I think in the uh, accepting speech, they, they part. They, they thank their partners at Netflix <laughs> for. Like, oh, it is on so. Netflix. Look at that. Yeah. So. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. That's worth checking out. Then I've, I've definitely. I need something to watch as a TV show. So. Yeah. <laughs> Hmm. But are you gonna tell the people the number one award? Who won oh. the game of the year? That leaves us with one thing. One thing. The game of the year, twenty twenty two. Um, the nominees. Read them off. Plague Tale, A Plague Tale Requiem, Elden Ring, God of War Ragnarok, Horizon Forbidden West, Stray, Xenoblade Chronicles Three. All solid titles, but uh. I think there was two in particular. I was like, okay, these two are probably going to be the ones to fight it out. It was between God of War and Elden Ring. I think those are the two yeah. like most talked about games. That's at least in recent. Most hyped up um, games. Yeah, so. most hyped games for sure. Um, and the games that probably delivered the most <laughs> in terms of like you know, promise and just overall, um, overall like value. Elden Ring ended up winning. Elden Ring. Um, definitely no surprise. I mean, that, that no, game... It's- the game came out start of the year it was a talk of the town for what felt like months and just people that still and play it um it made a comeback too at one point like everybody played it and then there was another surge i think they had like a small update and people went back and just kept going at it it was yeah. like it's kind of nuts how how big of a wave it had so it was so obvious that there should win it yeah i was really scared that god of war would win it though yeah yeah i almost felt like, like recency bias yeah very true. I think it is It is very recent, so it's kind of like it's hard to say if it's game of the year. Yeah. Fantastic game, though. So, um... It's only yeah. on one platform, too. Yeah. So it's like and Elden Ring was on pretty much everything. That's a really solid point. Like, you're, you're... I mean, not to say... I mean, Well, they are hindering themselves not having it on other platforms, for sure, in terms of, you know, initial players and everything. Um, you limit your votes. <laughs> I mean, yeah. What it is. You limit your votes. Yeah, it's so. it's very true, very true. Um, yeah, I mean that right there. I mean, don't get me wrong, fantastic game. But the second you make it an exclusive, it definitely uh 
definitely doesn't have the same punch, you know, so. Elden Ring, very deserving of that. Um, I, I even saw, too, like, there was that one girl that was beating Elden Ring bosses with a dance mat. Did you see that? <laughs> like, she was using a yeah. dance dance pad, <laughs> beating bosses on, like, level one. So, like, that's crazy. Um, so many things you could do with it. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's wild. That's, that's the thing about it. It's the challenge, so. Yeah. So, how did you feel? It. Um, how did you feel how, like, the award ceremony went? I, uh, t- t- I always love Game Awards. Voice crack. I always love game awards. Another voice crack. I always love the game awards. You said you were sick. It's okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm sick, guys. You know, That's my excuse. Um, but yeah, I I love the show every single year. I think it's um, it's always something I look forward to, and you know, the night of, it's always a it's always a huge event. And I mean, you could tell Jeff puts a lot of time into this award show. I mean, they're pretty much yeah, no maybe like a month or two after this one's done, they're already working on the next. Um. And that's between Summer Games Fest and Opening Night Live and all that. So, um, yeah, I'm I'm very happy with it. I I think a lot of the uh, yeah, it gives the a couple games to look forward to, and um, I'm very much uh, optimistic going into 2023. I think there's gonna be some good games that come out this year. So, um, very uh, very much enjoyed it. I mean, I, what do you think, Mike? What are your feelings on Game Awards? Uh, Game Awards or just award ceremonies in general? It, it's kind of I'm kind of whatever when it comes to it. I think it's pretty exciting to see like what's super popular because it's mostly it's like a popularity contest. But it's good to see that the games that really deserve to win those awards actually won it. Um, but I don't think you should be making video games to win awards. I think oh, you should yeah. be making games to be like for entertainment purposes that are successful. It was like obviously you need to make money. Uh, to function in reality but it's like to have something that's just successful to the point of like you can share a story or like share gameplay or like you can do anything and just bring a lot of people fulfillment and joy Sh- should be award uh, an award in its own self you know yeah but having said that i thought it was a good presentation it's pretty straightforward for i think there was only like what two hiccups maybe three there were a couple of people um the older uh actors actresses that couldn't really read the teleprompter mm, which yeah, I, get, totally. I get man like kind of like that happens to anybody not just because you're yeah. old um and then the other thing was the random person going up on stage dude look at, i mean i'm just like i'm showing it right now this this dude right here man like, oh and he goes up and he says all this nonsense that didn't make any sense yeah like, and then he got arrested a crazy person <laughs> yeah and then he got arrested so there you go yeah um yeah, yeah, that was unexpected. But I mean, yeah, again, a couple things like that. Al Pacino had an issue reading <laughs> the teleprompter. Yeah, he was um, so honest with yeah. it. He was like, "I gotta be honest, I can't really read it." You can tell <laughs> yeah. they enlarged the text size because yeah. he was reading it, but he had to slow down for the prompter to keep up. Yeah, yeah, which is yeah. really, really funny. But yeah, I mean, I mean, stuff like that's what makes these shows great. Um, I also yeah. think just like. It, like, I, like, there's like also swearing and stuff throughout it, which I think is all like the fact that it's not televised. I think is a lot of a big reason for like they can just be gung ho about it, which I, which I am a huge fan of. Um, I like just being able to be kind of open and just like honest about everything. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I think that's all fair. It was really cool to see how many like platforms it was streaming on. It was pretty much on everything on the yeah. internet. Yeah, I mean it always um, is. And, um, for gamers, by gamers, by like devs, nerds. Yeah. Sick. Um, yeah we sure. i know you and i we love it mostly for the game trailers and the game announcements and the release dates yeah so yeah and that's it at the end of the day too i think that's definitely when i think about the show I, that's what i look forward to the most is like okay what are some of the new games or the updates on games we already know exists like that that's what i look forward to the most not so much the actual award ceremony although you exactly. know you know kudos to these you know developers for making good games um and yeah but i mean i do agree with your point that you know definitely should never be the main objective of a dev is <laughs> to be like, oh, I want to win a game award. Um, yeah, but overall, I enjoy the show. I think it's a good time. Um, I think this yeah. year's is really good. So, cool. That's it. So, uh, I know we've been at this for well over an hour, We're approaching the hour and a half mark. Should we go ahead and tell them that next week's episode is basically the end of year episode, and that we're going on hiatus for what, like a month or so for the holidays? Yeah, about a month. Be the month, um, but yeah, yeah. Next week we're essentially doing our. It's, it's going to be the year recap show of season three. 
kind of what uh, favorite articles, what we favorite moments of the year, what we liked, um, what we thought uh we thought really stood out, and um, and yeah, maybe a couple even of those, I think we're probably going to be doing. Yeah. Um. um yeah, maybe. Small. Yeah, this is small stuff. I know. Uh, I know while we're while we're gone, especially too, there's going to be some um. There'll be some announcements as well during our hiatus, so <laughs> it's gonna be a... yeah. Keep an so, keep an eye out for those. Yeah, uh, for join sure. the Discord as well. We got uh we got Discord. We got links in the description. We got what do we got here, Kyle? We got Twitter. You can hit us up individually if you want to. Yeah, yeah. We got Twitter. We got pretty much everything. Um, so but yeah, Discord's the biggest one if you wanna see the new updates and everything, and see the dates for new games every month and everything. That's all in the Discord. That's... So. Yeah, that's probably the main thing that has the most value is if you want to go in there and you want to see what's coming out, what's going on. Like, I posted earlier in the notifications about every single game that won um, an award. And it's like in a text format, you can download it super easy to get to. So I think it's a, I think the award ceremony was pretty good. I think we got a good show coming up next week and I'm excited for next season and yeah. to tell people more about it in the future. A lot of big things coming ladies and gentlemen don't know how else to say it yes sir so i guess uh we'll go ahead and wrap up here um thanks for listening thanks for tuning in and uh without further ado this is the m2 podcast i'm michael Anty. that is kyle heath right there that guy right there and uh yeah appreciate you guys links are in the description by the way and timestamps you can check those out check it all out but peace out see you next week Have everyone thanks for listening